What is up amigos? Today we're doing the aerodynamics of a cylinder and this is a video showing this simulation of a cylinder. So we can see something called a von Karman street here and we'll go through what a von Karman street is, the different Reynolds numbers and the drag coefficient of a cylinder. This is actually quite an interesting topic and to be perfectly honest, it's one of the most difficult topics in aerodynamics at the moment because despite it being so simple, it's actually deceptively simple and there's a lot of research on this. So let's start off with von Karman street. We just saw a video there where we had a cylinder and the flow was coming in and then we get some sort of pattern like this. And each one of these little roll-ups is a vortex. And what this is is effectively with time, the fluid sheds from one surface and then it travels downstream in a vortex. Then in the next instant in time, the other side has this roll-up pattern and then goes down and then it flips flops back and forth. And that is the Von Karman Street. So why does this form? Well, the main reason why, let's talk about the vorticity first and then how that forms into vortices. So the reason why vorticity forms is because we have, let's say the cylinder, the flow comes over the top. And because whenever you have a curved surface like a cylinder or an airfoil or whatever, the fluid will accelerate over the surface. So here we have the fluid moving quite quickly. Now, if we have a surface and we have the flow going over it, we also have a boundary layer forming. And if you haven't seen the boundary layer video that we've done, check that out in the um, little card up here. And if you have the boundary layer forming, then this fast moving flow over the boundary layer, then above that slow moving fluid, which is just the regular free stream velocity, you have so much shearing going on. So you have all these different parts of the fluid just like ripping apart, like ripping it past each other, trying to pull each other apart. That creates vorticity. And then we get this roll up pattern that forms on one side, then the other and so, so forth. That's how the Von Karman Street forms and what it is. Now, despite the Von Karman Street probably being the most well-known phenomenon, the cylinder does not always produce a Von Karman Street. And this is where we get into the different Reynolds numbers and how that affects the flow physics over a cylinder. Let's start off with a super low Reynolds number, so below four. What the fluid will actually be, what the, the flow physics will get a cylinder here. We have the fluid coming in. It goes over and it actually stays attached and then goes downstream. So the fluid is completely attached. And this is called like potential flow, inviscid flow, Stokes flow. It's all effectively the same thing in this situation. So they go by several different names. In effect, um, the fluid stays attached. There's no more chemistry forming here. Now, if we were to increase the Reynolds number a little bit, so this is if the Reynolds number is below four. And if you don't know what the Reynolds number is and its effects on flow physics, check out our video that we've done on the Reynolds number in this card here. So if we have the Reynolds number now is greater, it's between four and 40, let's say, we then have the flow physics starting to change a little bit. So it starts to separate a little bit and we get one vortex forming here and the other vortex forming here. And the funny thing is it actually stands off of the cylinder and it just stays there. So this is just how it looks like if you were to come now or five seconds, five minutes, an hour's time is going to look like this. Now, if we increase the Reynolds number further and we say between one, sorry, between 40 and 1000, we then have the, the Von Karman Street forming here. So we have the fluid coming in like this. That's when we start to get the familiar Von Karman Street. Now, if we were to punch above the Reynolds number of 1000, we will still get, still get the Von Karman Street to some extent, but it'll start to break down. So if you go from 1,000 to, sorry, 300,000, this is a three heel. We'll then have the fluid coming in and then we have some sort of transitioning happening. So up until now, the flow has been very laminar. Now we'll get the flow starting to separate at some point and then it'll reattach and in the separation zone between here and here, the fluid will have transitioned and now we'll get the wake forming. And we can still get a Von Karman Street forming, but often it is just a, the, the higher the Reynolds number goes, the more just regular wakey it becomes. It's, there's no real method to the badness, it's just regular badness. And then if we have the Reynolds number above 300,000, so it goes to uh, 3 million now, we then get a bigger wake. So we have now this fluid coming over and we get a very big wake. And the point at which the flow detaches actually moves upstream. So this is important because we're going to now talk about the drag coefficient and how these flow physics phenomena affect the drag coefficients. So let's say we have a graph here 
which has the Reynolds number down here, and we have the drag coefficient here. Now we'll start off with the drag coefficient, which is very high, so it's going to be about, let's say five, and then we'll have it down to zero here, so one is about here. This is important, this marker here, and 0 0.3 here. These, these two values are quite important. So to begin with, the Reynolds number is incredibly high for a cylinder when the Reynolds number is above uh, less than four. Then it dives down dramatically, and then it hovers around one and stays there. And then let's discuss this part first before we go more. So it starts off very high because at a Reynolds number below four, the viscous forces are incredibly high. If you know that video that I was talking about on the Reynolds number, we discuss what the Reynolds number is and you understand that when you have a very low Reynolds number, the viscous forces are relatively high compared to the inertial forces. That results in a very high drag coefficient. When we increase the Reynolds number, the drag coefficient starts to drop a little bit and then we get to this plateau region at about one and this occurs in this sort of range. So between 40 and uh, 300,000, it starts to be like this. Then when we get to the point where we get um, transition, the drag coefficient drops dramatically. And the reason why we have the drag coefficient dropping dramatically is because the flow will stay attached longer. It does locally detach, but it comes back and reattaches. And now we have a smaller wake because it might um, separate at 120 degrees or so from this angle here. So this angle here is 120 degrees, whereas the point at which this separated before might have been anywhere between 80 degrees and 110 degrees. So because the fluid has stayed attached longer, the wake is smaller. The face that is experiencing a wake, which is, means it's low pressure as well, is smaller. So there's less uh, low pressure being felt, which means there's less drag overall, less pressure drag. Now, as we continue, the drag coefficient will actually start to jump up a little bit and then will hover at about 0 0.4 or so as we continue. This is because, as I mentioned here, as we increase the Reynolds number, we start to mitigate this point at which the fluid detaches and then reattaches because now what's happening is the fluid is just coming along, hits the cylinder, and it's transitioning to turbulence quite quickly. And in, again, in the Reynolds number, where we're talking about turbulence and lambda and all that, we were discussing how these different um, mechanisms occur. And because it transitions so quickly, the point at which it separates is significantly further upstream. And that means that we get a greater wake size here, and that increases the drag through pressure drag. And again, if you haven't looked at um, another video actually on our drag coefficient uh, explanation, we go through the difference between pressure drag, skin friction drag, um, profile drag, vortex drag, juice drag, etc. So that is the aerodynamics of a cylinder in a nutshell. There's a lot here, so let's quickly go through it just to recap. So the very familiar thing that everyone thinks of when you think about flow going over a cylinder is the von Karman Street, so this thing here. But that's just part of the story. This only occurs at certain Reynolds numbers. Below this range, so for example, at very low Reynolds numbers, the flow stays attached the entire way. And then when we start to increase the Reynolds number a little bit, we start to get this quite funky uh, flow physics happening here where we have these two standoff vortices just, just hovering there for all eternity. As we increase the Reynolds number, we get the von Karman Street, and then as we increase the Reynolds number even further, we start to get this von Karman Street breaking down a little bit. That's due to general, um, general instabilities. And as we go even further, the uh, weight becomes much larger, and the von Karman Street is not really even distinguishable. This corresponds to this drag coefficient uh, graph, where we start off with a very high drag coefficient of like five or even more. If you go to like a Reynolds number of like 0 0.1 or 0 0.01, so where the inertial forces are incredibly large compared to the uh, sorry, the viscous forces are incredibly large compared to the inertial forces. The drag coefficient is even higher, it's like almost 10. So it's quite ridiculous. And then it starts to dive down as the inertial forces become more important and that dominates the flow. Then when we get to the transition point, we get this drop again because now we have the fluid is staying attached longer over the cylinder. So the pressure drag drops. Then we start to uh, have an increase in the drag coefficient as we increase the Reynolds number because now the fluid separates a little bit further upstream. So that is the aerodynamics of a cylinder. If you like this, make sure to like it. And if you want to see more videos like this, click the subscribe button. And if you want to learn more about this, check out a book by John D. Anderson called Fundamentals of Aerodynamics. We've linked it in the description below so you can find it easily. We also have courses on theory and CFD. So if you want to learn more about that in the style that we do it, you can check out those courses and you'll be loving life. And if you want to make your experiments two to four times more accurate, if you're doing experiments in, in aerodynamics, check out MSU Hawk. It's just what we make to make your experiments that much more accurate. That's linked in the description below, and I'll see you next video. Peace out, amigos.